the Battle of Plattsburgh Commemoration Committee, and today is a big day for us because we're announcing what's going to happen on the weekend of September 8th, 9th, 10th, and excuse me, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th in September this fall uh, to commemorate the War of 1812 Battle of Plattsburgh on uh, September 11th, 1814. Uh, I've got a little prepared statement here which I've included to all of you so that you uh, will have exactly what I'm going to tell you uh, for your future reference. As you know, the Battle of the, uh, Plattsburgh was the site of a decisive battle in the War of 1812. On September 11, 1814, a British fleet headed south across the Canadian border into what was be to become the last invasion of, the, of U.S. soil by foreign troops. Accompanied by the army of, uh, was, it was an army of British regulars on land uh, along with these folks on Lake Champlain. Uh, and they met a smaller but very strategically placed American force. As a matter of fact, 15,000 British troops came across the border to face 1,500 Americans, most of whom were untrained uh, militia or just townsfolks like you and us to... Uh, to fight them and we won. The battle raged that morning on land and water and when the smoke had cleared the British flags were struck. Their naval commander Captain Downey lay mortally wounded uh, and a superior invading land force of British under Gen General George Prevost turned around and went back to Canada in defeat. Our committee has been preparing a four-day weekend of September 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th to raise the public awareness of this significant date in history uh, through a variety of tactical demonstrations, displays, musical events, lectures, and films. This weekend, we'll begin with a memorial service at Riverside Cemetery on Thursday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Uh, that will be at the gravesite of Captain Downey and other both British and American troops who are buried uh, there in our local cemetery. Featured during this uh, service, which is going to be conducted by the local clergy and Colonel David Fitzans, whom many of you recognize as one of the finest and most well-read experts of the Battle of Plattsburgh, uh, will be the Lakeside Corral. There will be bagpipers, uh, buglers, uh, color guards from various uh, veterans organizations. And there will also be an address by Thomas McDonough Russell IV. He's a sixth generation descendant of Commodore McDonough, who fought so valiantly here in the battle. At 7 o'clock that night, uh, the Historical Association and the um, SUNY Plattsburgh History Department have joined forces together to bring to us Dr. David Skaggs, who will be here from Bowling Green University. And uh, he will be speaking from 7 to 10 o'clock on Thursday night on the subject, Before Plattsburgh, Early Life and Career of Thomas McDonough. Dr. Skaggs is a very well-known uh, and recognized author and expert on the life of Commodore McDonough. So this should be a very interesting thing. Many of us uh, don't know this part of Commodore McDonough's life. As a matter of fact, many of us don't know anything about Commodore McDonough. So I think this will be a, a nice way to start the weekend. The following day on Friday will feature the arrival of the reenactors, which are expected, uh, whom are expected from New York, New England, Quebec, and Ontario. And they're going to be locating right here on the Kent Lord grounds uh, as they did last year. But we think there's going to be at least three times as many this year as there were last year. So we're very excited about that. Unfortunately, with reenactors, you're never quite sure until the day that they're supposed to arrive whether or not they're going to come. But we certainly encourage all of them to be here, and we certainly encourage them to let us know they're coming. Uh, Gary uh, Worthington here at the Kent Lord House is very, uh, very willing and ready to take the information from them and make uh, space available for them. We will occupy the whole side side yard and also areas behind the fence here too. Uh, Doctor and Mrs. Balukas have. Uh, kindly given us permission to expand into that area if we need to to accommodate the number of troops that we expect to be here. Well, let's see now. Uh, many local residents are going to be in period dress during the uh, 
during the weekend. Uh, you may recall that uh, in a battle like the Battle of Plattsburgh, uh, it, was, it was kind of localized and uh, the spectators from the town just get out and line the shores and watch the whole thing happen. So we will be uh, having a lot of those kinds of people uh, uh, circulating in the city and watching things happen as well in costume. Both Saturday and Sunday afternoons we'll have the staged tactical demonstrations as we did last year on the bank at the foot of the uh, uh, monument slope at the McDonough Monument. Um, Canadian troops and American troops armed with muskets and cannon and incidentally last year we had two cannon we expect eight cannon this year uh, so we should put a pretty good bang out for the buck. We hope that this will uh, continue to be the place to go in September for uh, our battle and as a matter of fact one of the participants from last year's reenactments uh, said quote the that Plattsburgh is writing the book for reenactors for the war of 1812 your reputation is at, of being the place to go is spreading fast so we think it spread pretty well from last year to this year if we if we do get three times as many people as we had last year um, I guess we're doing not everything wrong. The major goal of the committee is to make Plattsburgh a location that in future years, both not only Plattsburgh, but up and down the lake, we'd like to include Ticonderoga, Fort Ticonderoga, we'd like to include areas north of the border as well, as a place where history buffs and people who want to travel in the fall will come to see various things through, uh, along the lake, and Plattsburgh being one of them. To add to the program this year, the, Platts, uh, the Battle of Plattsburgh Commemoration uh, Committee we're, uh, are going to um, at least involve our new bateau. Uh, we have uh, had a committee of some of our reenactors who have been working on the construction of a new bateau. Uh, the bateaus, of course, were a very uh, useful and common thing to see up and down the lake and also during the battle they were very, uh, very widely used. And uh, some of our reenactors uh, with Chris Booth, not me, uh, leading them forward have been working for the last six months to uh, create this, build this boat, which is up three boards now and it's got two more to go to, to um, be, a, be finished. And we're sure that it's going to be done by September 11th and it will be christened on the weekend. We, and we expect it to be involved in the battle somehow, in the battle demonstration. And we have also invited other bateaux to be here, and we hope uh, one of them has said that they're going to make every effort to be here. They're from Ontario. And I saw them operate just last week, uh, two weekends ago, in Mallory Town, Ontario, where I went to watch a reenactment. Uh, and so I met and talked with the crew of that boat, and they're making every effort to be here in September. Now, Got uh, another thing, and I'd like I'd like Jody Malloy, who has been working uh, on all kinds of things for this committee, but specifically Jody about the Plattsburgh Noon Rotary Club and what they've got up their sleeve for this year. Yeah, sure. Can I just pass the microphones over. Pass them, pass the microphones over, or maybe I can slide right. Sure. Okay, Jody, go for it. Okay, can everyone see this? The Plattsburgh. Noon Rotary Club will sponsor the third annual Antique and Classic Boat Show on Saturday, September 11th, 1999 at Plattsburgh Boat Basin and Marina. Anyone interested in showing power or sail craft may contact me, Jody Malloy, at 5631077 or email info info at offsys.com. <laughs> Trophies will be awarded for antiques, reproductions, and best in show. Interested vendors may also contact me, Jody Malloy, or Nick Pope. Our goal as the Plattsburgh Rotary Club is by the year 2014 to be able to bring real tall ships up here. And with that view, we hope to grow this show to be one of the absolutely most interesting shows in the Northeast. We hope to have Rotarians and guests from surrounding states and Canada this year. Naturally, the show will be open to the public and is free to the public. Thank you. Thanks, Joy.
And another thing that's new this year, that I guess that wasn't new, but the Rotary Club doing it for the first time this year is new. Uh, we're going to have a biathlon, and the YMCA is going to sponsor it and uh, handle all the details on it, fortunately for us. It's going to be held on Saturday morning, and uh, it'll, go, it'll start with a run from the City Hall to the Crate Center. Then they'll hop on bicycles, ride around Cumberland Head, come back to the Crate Center, get off their bikes and run back to the City Hall. Uh, and at that time, uh, there will be prizes and refreshments for the participants, and prizes uh, are going to be awarded by probably the mayor. Uh, the city police and county police are cooperating with us, as well as uh, Vince and the, uh, and the ham radio operators who are going to be there to help ensure safety for the, especially the bikers, um, and to monitor the, the uh, race as, as it progresses. Again this year, we've had a poster contest, and Mike Kulik was uh, heading that up again this year as he was last year. He's not here right at the moment. But we had over 150 entries from area fourth graders. And you see behind us the pictures, the posters that the three winners created. And we're very proud of those. And Pat Schwartz is right over here. I'd like to ask Pat if she would introduce two of the winners who are with us today. Okay, we have... Our four first place winner is not here, she's on vacation, but we do have our second and third place winners, and second place is Abraham Armani Munn, whose picture is on the wall there, he has some very interesting features on the faces, and Hillary Miner is our third place winner, um, and if you look at the color, she has some really neat colors in, in her picture as well. Um, Abraham is from St. Alexander's School, and Hillary and Elizabeth are both from Saranac Elementary. Thanks, thanks very much, Pat. Um, What? Yeah, yeah. Um, Pat mentioned uh, that Elizabeth Terry was the first place winner. And as you recall, last year we used the poster of the first place winner to create the buttons which were used as souvenirs for the uh, event last year. This year we have now a button. This is a prototype of the button. We don't have a, a lot of them created, this one so far. But this is the button that will be used and it, it uh, incorporates the center part, the center, what? Um, that's the center part of uh, Elizabeth's poster. So we're very pleased and proud, and on this thing it also says that the artwork is by Elizabeth um, Terry. So we're very proud of that. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that button in just a minute because that's going to be a very important part of the weekend. It's not just a souvenir. There's, there has been also a new thing this year, an, an historic trail which has been created by the Boy Scouts and Jack Barrett uh, specifically, who was a member of our committee and also a uh, leader in the Boy Scout movement. That's going to be inaugurated on Saturday and there have, have been created special patches that have been designed and made so that Boy Scouts who walk this trail uh, and at each stop there will be some questions that they have to answer when they get them answered and uh, finish the trail They will be awarded a, a patch to sew on their uniform and this this trail will be open Opened initially on this weekend, but it will be open uh, Apparently for the whole year for any Boy Scouts who might be visiting the area from other areas of the country and want to want to earn this patch The, there will be special exhibits at the Clinton County Historical Museum, at the Kent the Lord House Museum right here, the Historical Museum at 48 Court Street, of course. Uh, the McDonough Monument is going to be open um, for people to go up and down on self-guided tours. Nobody is going to walk every one of them up and down again, but uh, it's a wonderful place to get to uh, several hundred feet above the uh, the, the ground and look around not only at the battle site which you can see very well in the in the uh, Bay, but also a 360 degree view of this whole area. It's a magnificent view from up there uh, Once you've walked it w once you may never want to walk up there again But it's a, it's it's a great thing to do once at least and uh, it will be open for your Opportunity to do that and of course the interpretive center in the on the second floor of City Hall is going to be open throughout the weekend with really quite an extensive program 
which you will see when you when you look at the program we have for the weekend they're all detailed in there the downtown Plattsburgh downtown association uh, very graciously this year has contracted with a group of bagpipers and drummers called the South Glengarry Township Pipers and Drums. And they will be here from Ontario to uh, perform on Saturday. So that's going to be a new, a new item. And, and I've heard just today how, how well they did uh, locally, I think, in Rouses Point in, within uh, just the last few weeks. Sunday, Aikens Volunteers, that wonderful group of pipers and drummers that was here last year from Essex, will be back. And they will perform, both of these uh, musical groups will perform just prior to the um, tactical demonstration at 2.30. So they'll be performing probably around the 2 o'clock area. It's all in the schedule. The farmer's market is going to have a gigantic garage sale. It's going to go on all day on Saturday. There are going to be multiple screenings of that wonderful video that we saw last year for the first year, the Battle of Plattsburgh, the final invasion that was done by Colonel David Fitzens and Bruce Carlin. And that's going to be shown, I think, five times during the weekend. Uh, again, it'll be with the uh, Interpretive Center. Melissa Bista Cross is going to be leading several narrated tours of the historic area of downtown Plattsburgh, which uh, she did last year. And she'll do those throughout the day, I mean several times during the day, and at night by candlelight. For stamp collectors, there's going to be a special cancellation commemorating the Battle of Plattsburgh that will go on at the post office on Saturday morning. And the Boy, Sh Boy Scouts will have a booth where they will also be offering caches of, of the... Uh, for the Battle of Plattsburgh as well. From noon until 6 p.m., Captain Frank Pabst and the crew of the Juniper are going to conduct narrated tours, a special short tour out and around Crab Island. Crab Island is, of course, where uh, many of the British and American service people were buried after the uh, war. There was a hospital there. And, uh, of course, he will be traveling through the area where the battle actually took place on his boat, the Juniper. And we're very happy to have him doing that. There will be a small charge for that. I want to tell you that up front because I'm going to tell you something else about charges in a minute. But Frank has said that he will offer to anybody wearing a button a $5 charge for that tour and those who aren't wearing buttons $8. On the final day, all these venues that I've been talking about for Saturday will be open again on Sunday. There will be a tactical demonstration again Sunday afternoon. And there's going to be a wreath laying as a final thing for the weekend, a wreath laying ceremony off the Juniper uh, near Crab Island, again, to commemorate those who have died and are buried out there. It'll be sponsored by the American Legion Post 20 and area veterans organizations from several wars. It'll take place off the shore of the island, and the ceremony will, be, will include color guards from several local veterans units, appropriate eulogies, pipers, taps, and a firing of a salute. All, all are welcome on this. However, you know the Juniper, and you, it's, there's just so much space <coughs> in it, so you need to get there early if you want to take part in this. Now, one of the big things that we're going to do this year for the first time is that we have got a souvenir button. This souvenir button is going to be the admission charge for everything for the weekend. You'll be able to get in the Kent the Lord House, the museum, go up the monument, go to the Interpretive Center, uh, and even come to Adirondack Brass here on Friday night, which is going to be a jam-packed audience, I think, Gary, because of the fact that uh, it was so popular last year. All going to be covered with the price of the button. And that button will be $3 for adults, $2 for children, a maximum of $10 per family. So... That's, that, it's quite similar to what they do in, in Burlington. You know, on first night, uh, a button gets you into all the things that are going on. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to have those on sale very shortly, probably uh, in the latter half of, of August, I would say. We would have them on sale, and they'll be in lots of different locations. We will um, let you know where those locations will be when we've got those set in stone, but we don't have that done yet. 
There will be souvenir programs. We're printing 2,500 souvenir programs, uh, which which will include uh, the schedule and uh, uh, some narrative about what the weekend is all about. And those will be available, of course, free of charge. While the schedule is, uh, I want to tell you that it's still being refined. I was typing this morning to get what you've got now, and there will be more things added. Uh, but this, I think, gives you a flavor of what the weekend is going to be all about. The committee is uh, comprised, as you probably know, strictly of volunteers. There isn't a paid person here. We've been meeting since last October, uh, one month after the last event. And we've been meeting monthly, so there's been a lot of effort and a lot of time, and a lot of uh, a lot of shoe leather expended on this weekend, and we hope that it's going to be a great success. Uh, we hope to grow it each year, as Jody said, not just the boat show, but the whole weekend, shooting at uh, 1814 as the 200th year anniversary of the Battle of Plattsburgh. We've seen a lot of growth since last year, since two years ago, at least two years in 1997, there was a smaller uh, celebration. Last year was a growth from that, and we expect that this year is going to uh, outstrip last year, I hope. Uh, weather will, will help if it's good, and so we're, we're looking forward to that. We, we are convinced that people really do care about their heritage and their history, and they want to learn more, and we're trying to do that. Uh, it's our intention to educate and to entertain so that uh, it's an interesting weekend, it's a fun weekend, and you'll learn something when you come out the other end. So, we need a few volunteers, and if, you, if anybody in the, in the audience would be interested, we will certainly need people for uh, costume to town people, for admission button sales, for uh, biathlon race um, course control, uh, Chris has built a bateau. We're going to need at least six strong men and, an, and a helmsman, helmsman to run that baby. And I don't know where, whether you've got anybody yet, have you? Well, uh, we have some. Yeah? Some people, but yeah. uh, a lot of them are also reenactors. So I think probably it will be... We, we, we need more. We don't water do want to water down the muskets. We want to have some extra people who will, who will uh, row. Uh, Chris has got a whip that he will use on them to be sure that they do it right. And of course, uh, museum security and crowd control where it's necessary. And I'm just about to tell you something where I think it might be necessary, Joanne, and I think you should tell them because uh, this is, this is a, a, as I said, things keep changing. This changed so fast that it's at one o'clock. I didn't know about this. So it's not in the schedule here, but Joanne, tell us what's gonna happen. Of course, as Kit said, we have Special late breaking news, as of 1 p.m. today, Pepsi-Cola Company has agreed to the fireworks extravaganza on Friday evening, September 10th, 1999. Time to be announced. Yeah. We're very grateful to Pepsi-Cola for coming through like that, and uh, they will be the sponsor this year of the fireworks display. And we're delighted. Delighted to be able to provide it to you because we weren't sure quite where the money was going to come from in the budget that we had. That wasn't something that we had uh, considered this year. But there it is. And they stepped up to the plate. They stepped Thank up to the plate. Thank you very much to Pepsi. Hit it over the fence. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's, that's this essentially what I had to tell you today. And I'd be very happy to answer any questions or do whatever you'd like. Soft shoe or whatever. The, the fireworks, Friday or Saturday? Friday, Friday night with a rain date Saturday is what we're mm. proposing. Time will be announced. We work out all the details. We don't have anything else. Um, I, I don't think we have anything else that's uh, going to conflict on Friday night. And we'll look at that after that. There's a showing of a final invasion, I think, in the Adirondack Forest. I think that's the thing that's Yeah, the Adirondack Forest is uh, seven to eight, so sometime after the Adirondack Forest would be an appropriate time to shoot off some fireworks in it right here because we're going to be right across here. <laughs> I don't think the brass would care for that. So we'll we'll do it after the Adirondack brass performance. Let's put it that way. Eighteen twelve overture. Eighteen twelve overture. Let's tell Dr. Off. Craig about that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Any other questions?
Okay. It's over.